Hey, hey, it's Filet, and you're watching Filet TV, the ultimate YouTube channel. I'm no cinematographer, just a dude with a camera. All right, this is update part six. We put in some two and a half inch drop spindles. We pounded new races into the front brake discs. Remember, pound them in straight. Wait till you hear that bell sound, and you're good to go. Then we also put in the race seals in the back. So we can get the rotors all put put on and check out the ride height after going down two and a half inches. Had a little bit of issues with some tire size and with the adapters hitting the calipers so I couldn't run the BRMs. But you'll see as we go along, we're going to work it out somehow. Enjoy the video. And since I was not able to run with the BRMs, which I still might put them on there, we decided to go with the stock original VW Puma wheels. You know, because that's what's stock, so it's going to look good anyways. All right, here we go. Kind of got ahead of myself this morning. I said I was going to videotape how I put this together, but, you know, I never didn't do it. You, know, you go to test fit something, and then next thing you know, you're assembling it, and you don't set up a camera. So anyways, we've got the drop spindles in with the new ball joints. New tie rod ends are in. I'm doing the brake lines right now. Everything's painted and cleaned up. And everything seems to be going well. No issues as of this point. And on this side, I jumped the gun even further and have got as far as getting the brake rotor on, I means setting the bearings. On that note, I'm set up right here to pound in my races for my front bearings. Now, let me see if we're going to be able to do this. Maybe I'll try and set up the camera on a tripod. Okay, I'll set it up right here where we have some sunlight to give us a pretty good shot. Okay, so the first thing I do is I lay a little tiny bit of grease on the inside of these her brand new German brake rotors and we have FAG bearings and this is the race so what I've done is I've gone through the toolbox and I found a socket this is 11 sixteenths Maybe the correct bevel side up. And I lay it in there and I give it a couple of taps just to make sure it's kind of going in square. And I'm just banging it to level. You know. <laughs> so I'm just banging this down to level. Then the socket's going to sit right on top of that. We're going to drive it in until we hear like a bell ring sound. That's the sound you want to hear. That means it's bottomed out. And the other side, same thing. Give it a little bit of grease just to help it slip through. And I grab my other FAG bearing. And this time I have selected 36 millimeter. Huh. Didn't know I had two of those. Okay. And the same thing with this. You can try and line this up as best as you can. Because the whole idea is to get these to go in straight. Now I wish I had a little bit bigger of a pipe or bigger socket And then sometimes you have to take a little chisel to try to 
straighten it out. Then you can get it to go in straight. There's that ring we're looking for. Okay, then back to the multi-purpose grease. And this is the messy part. You want to make sure you get a lot of grease on here. And then I try and spin this around. So I make sure the grease gets really worked in there. And then I gob it and drop it. I add the mess, grab the greasiest towel in the shop to clean the grease off your fingers. And now we're going to add the rear grease seal, which fits into place and just give it a couple of a couple of taps to get that to seat. And while your hands are still a mess, you go through and do the same thing with the front small taper bearing. And again, gob some more in there. And I drop it in place and I grab it again. Grab the greasiest shop towel you got, which happens to be a leftover old kitchen towel. And that's it for now. And then back on this side now, we're just going to slide the rotor. It's kind of weird. I just replaced these with drop spindles, and there's no holes to put vacuum plates. New spindles have them, but. These aftermarket, or these are aftermarket as well, but these drop spindles for some reason didn't have it. Kind of crazy. All right, so we slip the bearing and rotor into place. Make sure you get a good seat on it. That's when I brush on just a little bit more grease on there. Find the centering washer. Line it up into place. And from the sound of the dogs and the sound of the truck outside, it sounds like we are getting a delivery. And I know there's some parts that I'm waiting from Brazil, and hopefully it got here today. So what we're going to do is just spin this on. Again, the greasy towel. And incidentally, these are coated in this silver aluminum color. And I read online that these don't even have to be washed off. I mean, I will rub all the grease off of them when I'm done. But they don't have to be treated or anything all right so there's about where you want to be on that I think let's give it another little crank doesn't have to be too tight nor too loose and then somewhere around here you have an allen key which I did not bring. Anyways, you got the picture. That's what the next step was. From here, we will get the new calipers bolted into place. And we're hoping that we don't have an issue here either. All right, well, I'm gonna move this camera and move the grease and get all this together and hopefully And then once the caliper's on, we'll go ahead and thread, it, thread in the brake hose. All 
and then we are going to be good to go. Just a little cleanup. It's going to be time to put the shocks into place. However, I don't have the upper boots, so I have to go pick those up. The shocks are going to place, and now it's starting to take shape. All right, I got to go run for parts, so we will be back shortly. Let's get a show of hands on how many people hate putting on the factory sway bar. Here's a little trick. A couple of vice grips, get it lined up, clamp them into place. And then as you can see, these pieces will just slide right in. And you give them a couple of taps with a hammer to get them started. And then once you release the vice grips, you can pound them. All the way in with ease. And as you can see, the other side's still hanging. So that makes it a little more difficult. But go to the other side, just as simple. All right, now that it's all buttoned up, I'm going to go get my shock stops for the top, go get some tires mounted, and then we're going to get these BRMs on here. Okay, this is where the two and a half inch drop in the front via spindles. And that's still stock in the back with the 14 inch wheels. That I haven't polished or cleaned up or anything yet, but ultimately that might be the setup. I'm going to change front tires and see if I can go with something a little bit thinner. It seems to have come back down quite a bit. And tomorrow I'm going to try another wheel tire combination and move a couple of cars around. Unfortunately the BRMs aren't going to work this time until I get um, a different setup for the front. And I think I'm going to have to narrow the beam. But that's a whole nother episode. For now, we got wheels and tires on it, and we're rolling. Tomorrow, I'll bleed and adjust the brakes, and we'll roll it out here and take a better look at it. This is the five and a half inch BRM with a 135 tire on it, running disc brakes and wheel adapters, but the wheel adapters hit my calipers. So I've even got a spaced it out even a little further and as you can see it's sitting out there considerably looks a little hokey in my eyes with as much room as we have behind the tire i think i can go with a four inch narrow beam if i'm going to run those tires i wound up going to a one 85 60 14 for the front end of the Puma with a two and a half inch drop and that looks like it's doing pretty good I like that it takes up most of the wheel well it's not too low in the back we got hefty meets at 195 75 14 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these wheels since I have caps and valve caps and everything my idea is to get them cleaned up I'll show you what I wor was working on. This is the front passenger side wheel that I spent a good couple hours, you know, cleaning it up, doing a little polishing, a little SOSing to get the oxidization off. And I think that's the finished product we're going to do. As you can see, these wheels aren't bad. There's a lot of tarnish because they probably haven't been cleaned in forever so i'm going to do that i'm going to get all four of these wheels cleaned up and in back in so that'll be the next video i'll show you how i got these wheels to look so good anyways i hope you guys like the video this video putting two and a half inch drop in the front of the puma thanks for watching fillet tv don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you can keep up to date on my puma and many other barn finds that i'm playing with thanks for watching fillet tv ciao